afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. This is another episode of the micro learnings with the DNA. So today, and actually it's a question what I got from a lot of people is, I work in a corporate company and we aim to innovate, but we actually don't know how to do it. Uh, we've been trying a lot of projects, we're trying a lot of different things, but somehow we're struggling with, with enabling uh, our organization to innovate. Now, um, a few months ago, I met a really special person, uh, actually through a course I'm doing via the Power MBA, and uh, I was so inspired by her approach on the thinking of how can you help organizations get into that 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 more startup innovation vibe. Um, it was such a special approach where we are not going to talk about actually maybe at the end but when we started talking uh, in person we we both were talking about co-creation now as you guys know dna is all about co-creation we help uh, people connect with their peers to solve business challenges and we're taking the next level on that but co-creation is also something you could consider if you're thinking about innovation so my special guest for today is Fabian Nunes. She is the CEO and founder of Startup Mundi and one of the top four women entrepreneurs of the year for B2B startups. All right, that is exciting, eh? We got a top four here, top four. Um, Fabian, so great to have you here. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Thank you, Rohit. And that was a challenge that also interested me a lot uh, back um, a few years ago, you know, like how can corporates, you know, uh, embody or learn from startups on creating, you know, this agility of innovation. So how corporates can innovate with the agility of startups, not necessarily be startups, right? If you're a big yeah. organization, you don't want to be a startup, but somehow they managed to create some best practices of innovating with such an agility. And this is what corporates are also wanting to internalize. Yeah, it's, it's a really important topic because we talk about startup thinking, innovation, changing our organizations. Um, I work with both startups, scale-ups, as with corporates. I'm actually a corporate guy. Uh, up till two, three years, I only have been working for a corporate organization. And I know how complex it is to, to get that innovation mindset. And we had different challenges. Uh, some were, look, can we innovate ourselves? Let's try it. Well, that didn't work. Well let's try and build an alliance partnership with someone else and then try and see if we can build another business and see if you can buy it later. Great, but it was not a long-term game. And sometimes you have a big challenge with cultures between us organizations. Try M&A, buying companies. Let's get them incorporated within our company. That's most of the time didn't work because we tried to incorporate the startup organization within our company and then give them all our processes. Again, challenging. So today we want to look at a different side of things. The point of co-creation and co-creation does not predominantly mean that you are the startup or you're putting teams there, but co-creation means how do you partner up? How do you find, how do you work with um, people who could elevate that co-creation within your organization? Let's start with the startup organizations and uh, how do they do that? What is the key for co-creation? Good. Rohit, if I may, I'm going to take one step back and talk about, you know, I think that the general overarching umbrella here is open innovation. And this is a topic that, you know, it, it is very much or, or has become a trend. I think nowadays, almost 100% of the big multinational organizations have open innovation programs. And the difference here being that until not too long ago, uh, you know, to innovate, especially on the product side or on the core services side, you had your research and development organization that worked very much, you know, with the premises of secrecy and within four walls. You know, you need an NDA, et cetera, because, you know, we own 100% of the knowledge that we need to innovate in this field. Uh, then the, the speed 
of technology materials, you know, everything that is out there, the ecosystems of various sectors started developing so quickly that it became almost impossible for the R&D teams or the process improvement teams to have all that knowledge in house. And then the concept of open innovation started to you know, get more adopted uh, throughout the various sectors and open innovation only means that you know my innovation is now not done inside these four walls but i open up to partnerships and of course there are many different partners that you can involve in your open innovation process like university research labs government different entities but today we're going to focus on probably the most the, the biggest trend of the moment, which is, you know, the open innovation between corporates and startups. And uh, there are many different stakeholders when we talk about, you know, this kind of partnership and, uh, you know, a, a lot of different parameters that have to be taken into account for co-creation to actually have value uh, to both sides to be a win-win situation mm -hmm. because you know this is the typical thing that you know at the same time these are partners but they can be competitors so the challenge comes on how do you align the different stakeholders involved in the corporate side and you know also the understanding of the life cycle and the maturity and the timing of this startup so that this co-creation will not drain the startup but will you know add value to the startup at the same time but with very different interests at stake and this is where the challenge comes from yeah. I find this one really interesting, the different interest at stake. Um, I was talking last time to uh, one of my clients, uh, which is a Barcelona startup. Amazing idea, amazing concepts. And he was approached by a corporate organization because they liked his thinking. He presented his, his case in a, in, an, in, an, uh, in a meeting with venture capitalists, but there were also some corporates there listening in into what can we do with 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 we're working together and his first concern was look if i co-create this with you my objective is x yeah let's not talk about the detail but it's x but i know that if i start co-creating with this corporate i'm going to have all nda documents etc okay that's fine that's the first step but what will happen if this product or the solution becomes a success are they going to eat me up the same day and i can start over again there's a lot of concern getting those two parties working together. Uh, the corporate structure with the structure, with contracts and all that stuff. And then you have the, the innovators, the creative people who, who find something which is their passion, jump on it and, and try to make it successful. And maybe one thing to add, you have two different philosophies. A corporate organization, every year they do 4 or 5% extra. They're not dying. They got investors. It, 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 it's, it's fine. Then you move towards the startup organization, which is every day they're dying. Every day they're looking for the next funding. So that whole dynamic is, is, is tricky. So two questions I have for you. One, um, how do I make sure as a startup that I'm not being eaten up by the corporate? And the second one is how do you mingle my philosophy of I'm always dying towards we've got money enough, we will eat everyone up. <laughs> okay, so let's let's look at both sides. So, uh, from from a startup side, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the journey and when you know uh, co co creations or proof of concepts, which are very common way of starting these corporations work mm -hmm. and then also then we'll move to the corporate side and talk a little bit about you know <laughs> their concern of what should i help this startup so it can help mm -hmm. me understanding and incorporating this technology but also you know 
that it doesn't become there is a concern of if it becomes too strong, it will become a competitor, disrupt my business as well, and how to reach that balance. So let's just start with the startups. The startup journey usually starts, you know, I, I, I fall in love with a problem or I have a great idea and I need to identify if this idea will solve a problem for potential customers and users. Um, it is a passion. A lot of the entrepreneurs are driven by passion, but they also need to eat at the end of the day and make a living. <laughs> so, you know, a, a lot of people try, you know, think of the typical entrepreneur driven by passion, but we are also seeing in the market that the age bracket for entrepreneurs, because we're getting now, you know, serial entrepreneurs, etc., that are on their third or fourth venture, their age bracket is rising, so it's not that guy out of college or you know dropping out of college yeah. to pursue their dreams. They have families, they have rent, right? So they need to balance this whole journey as well with you know means to live. So they start with this idea or problem, and they need to validate this usually through an MVP, a minimum viable product cycle of iterations in which that maturity validate that they're really solving a valid problem. And then if you are especially if you are on a B2B um, business model, usually after you reach maturity on your MVP, the next step will be to find a company to run your proof of concept or kind of the better version, if you may. And this is something that, you know, this journey is what the simulation of Startup Mundi also takes you through. So usually, you know, this is the stage where startups will start B2B, especially will start to actively look for companies to do their proof of concept. Their intent here is, you know, to find someone that will run their product or service or whatever in a real world, in a real, you know, setup and give them feedback so that they can mature their processes, their product, you know, as quickly as possible and with the least amount of cost possible. So, you know, they can start their go to market on, on, on a little bit bigger uh, scale. Now on the, 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 they're very focused, their resources are very limited at this point in time. Uh, a lot of the startups will not have raised any funds still at this point. Uh, some of them maybe will have gone through an acceleration program and received some, some very small amount of capital to, to invest in, on, on their proof of concept stage. So, you know, these guys here, they're very focused. I need to validate my product. I need to get, you know, to the next level of maturity. Least amount of time, least amount of cost. Now, let's jump to the corporate side. This is usually an innovation team or something of the sort of, or an internal incubator, a, VC, a, a, um, a corporate venture a fund looking for startups that are solving a problem or a challenge that they have identified within their organization. These guys have a budget and they also have some sort of risk mitigation process in place because you know they're going to have to recruit a department to work with these guys they want to also you know invest the least amount of money but also mitigate the risk for themselves because they're very invested for this to work but also for the department that is kind of will co-create with this start mm -hmm. And co-creation at this stage is very open. If we think, you know, a startup early stage, proof of concept. Um, but they want this startup to solve their problem as much as possible. So their driver is, I, I want to do this for free if possible, <laughs> or, you know, I have kind of a very small figure that I want to use for this proof of concept. And also my objective is to solve my problem. And this comes kind of the first challenge of this co-creation period, because the startup, if they, they cannot float too far away 
from their product roadmap or their vision of the product because otherwise they're going to invest too much resources in this specific customer or deal and this might compromise their ability or their plans for go to market but on the other hand they need this first business case with this particular organization to work in order to be able to use this as a platform to acquire their new deals in the go to market phase so you know you, you create a bit of this balance and of course the maturity of the entrepreneurs on one hand will help you know especially that's why you know funds and in, in, in corporate ventures very much like you know, uh, entrepreneurs that have done this before and are on their second or third venture because they've learned from this before, but also the maturity of the corporate team in dealing with startups. You know, the, uh, it's a lot also about empathy, you know, understanding the shoes and the stage of development and the level of resources and capital that this uh, startup has at this point of time because you know we've seen a lot of cases in our work with corporates and innovation teams of teams that you know th they work on a very regulated sector you know for example healthcare or some of the manufacturing environments like automotive aeronautics etc these are high governance high risk you know, uh, environments. So they, they, they're used to working with very big suppliers and they have a, you know, a corporate supplier mentality. And these suppliers usually are sometimes as big as the corporate themselves. And they have a very high level of maturity of processes, service level agreements, contracts, quality uh, processes. And this is the expectation sometimes of the department that is receiving this startup as a potential supplier. And this is a bit of the mindset challenge that starts here because uh, you, know, you have to prepare your organization to understand that you know, a startup is not a supplier, it's there to do either proof of concept or to co-create something with you to help you solve your challenge and to help you also learn through this journey by being the first because you know there is a bit of this um everybody wants to innovate but nobody wants to be first and every entrepreneur will <laughs> you know uh, sympathize with this you go to an organization or a corporate and you say i have something very innovative that i would like to offer you to test with you ah this is so amazing who is already doing that well That's no okay. one it's an innovation <laughs> oh well then you know uh do we want to be the first you know but there's always the, the advantage of the first entry you know and this is a lot yeah. of the gain from from the corporate side as well but going back to the point uh, i think you know that the way that corporates uh, need to look at this in order to also contribute to the uh, survival of these startups um, is, you know, to a, it's to contribute to the survival of the startups, but also to ensure a return on investment on their innovation initiative, of course, uh, you know, that the receiving departments are properly uh, educated or aware that this is not a supply, you know, and set the bar of expectations you know, this is their maturity level, this is their stage, this is the level of resources that they work with, this is their core focus. Otherwise, you know, this department is saying, cool, let's test this. What's your SLA? Well, we don't have an SLA because we haven't had enough usage to establish SLA. Uh, how you're going to assure quality process? Well, we don't have a quality process because we're, you know, on the proof of concept stage. You know, so these are very kind of, you know, people see this as nuances, but it actually has a huge impact on, you know, the success of this co-creation or validation 
initiatives at the end of the day. Yeah, uh, I, cannot, I, I, cannot, I cannot agree more to this one because it's really important. The differences in, 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 in the structure and um, uh, the mentality of, of those two types of organizations is so different. And it often the, 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 the partnership breaks already on the initial engagement of getting that contract, getting that, that partnership up and running uh, versus the, the emotional partnership, the connection you make. Um, uh, I want to buy something from you. I want to work with you towards, okay, but how do I make sure I take less risk, more risk? How far do we dare to go? And is my team, especially for the corporates, are they ready to onboard such a kind of company? And one thing uh, I really like what you're saying, the startup organization is not a corporate. It's not a company you're buying. It's not a supplier, but it's actually a kind of a partnership you're creating. And you need to educate them up front. So I, I really like what you're saying on that topic. No, and, and, and this is vital. And, and this awareness, you know, this kind of, mm -hmm. you, you don't need to be an expert on innovation. You don't need to be an expert on, on startup uh, phases and maturity level. It's mm -hmm. more about, you know, having the awareness. And I think I, I always say empathy and awareness go a long way you know, understanding, you know, that this is a different yeah. context than your traditional supplier, uh, corporate or, or buyer relationship, but also on an individual level. Now, if we talk, you know, not about the corporate or, or the whole innovation mm -hmm. funnel type of approach, but on an individual level, you know, people are risk averse at an individual level. So, you know, in at corporate, it's all about, you know, this is all very, um, you know, pretty and, and well said when people go and, you know, say, go fast, break things, you know, learn, fa uh, fail fast, learn fast. Th th this is very embodied in, in, in the startup mindset, but at corporate, you know, this can put your career at risk, this can put your job at risk, you know, your, your whole kind of status within the, the organization that, you know, you did something and, and you, you failed or it didn't work out. And, and I always say, you know, that being aware of um, when and how to innovate is the key to this. Because indeed, you know, if you go fast and break things, you know, uh, a lot of people love that saying, you know, Mark Zuckerberg say that all the time, you know, we're learn fast, fail fast, you know, Eric Chris uh, hammers on that. But um this is people get scared of that because am I compromising myself on this process? So this is when we say, you know, there is a time and a place to innovate. And there are places where you should definitely not make mistakes. You know, when we look at processes that have been tested and done and implemented and they have a certain maturity level, they do not tolerate mistakes because they should be repetitive. And if done well, there's shouldn't be any mistakes there and mistakes there are true mistakes because we've learned from them before and we've now should be you know so operations and things should not have that same mindset when we talk about this you know we talk about okay i'm going to have an idea that i submitted as you know an entrepreneur program or uh, an employee ideas program or i'm working you know cooperating i'm a champion within the innovation funnel or something like this and i know the best practices of validating an idea with the least amount of time and money so i'm not taking a huge amount of resources you know from my organization in order to do this if i can do this you know in a startup kind of way with the least amount of time and money and kind of, you know, so um, by understanding this, you know, uh, you also minimize your risk, you know, because you will know how to do it and when to do it. Because, you know, this is not for every process or for every day. Sure. So, um, you already gave a lot of tips and normally I would be asking you for give me your top five, top three tips, but actually the whole chat has already delivered a lot of valuable information to the people uh, in this, um, in this, um, listen to the podcast. Now, um, 
we can talk for, about this topic for hours. And uh, also looking at the last chat, we will be talking for hours, but that's not the objective of today's uh, micro learning. Um, what I want to do is I want to spend some last five minutes talking about Startup Mundi. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, for the people listening, uh, I follow a, a course in the Power MBA course. And of course, uh, I'm starting to follow because I like to learn more about the startup mentality, validating business models, uh, getting a good product market fit to ensure that I can support my clients better. But also, we are busy with uh, our own startup to build that out. And Fabian had, had a, um, a, a two or three lectures I watched about Startup Mundi. And I was thinking, what she's doing is something actually every corporate organization who's thinking about the getting an, uh, of, 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 of transforming their organization into a more inno innovative mindset. She built a tool which is actually quite amazing. Can you tell the people in, in a short pitch what it is and how, it, how they can benefit from it? Great. Thanks for the opportunity to, to do that. Uh, Startup Monday is a game experience. It's a simulation that simulates how to take an innovative idea from conception or ideation to scalability using exactly the best practices of lean startups. So what are the best practices of doing that? That can be done in many ways using different kind of resources, but how to do that with the least amount of time and money. And with this simulation, we, we work with two segments, corporate innovation and entrepreneurial education. But in the corporate innovation, you know, this is space be, that of cooperation that we've been talking about. It's exactly a tool to create this awareness. So uh, your corporate um, employees, they can have the opportunity of being the CEO of a startup for a day. You know, learn these best practices, learn, you know, this, this mindset and create a comfort zone, you know, that if they come to a position where, you know, they're expected to be more entrepreneurial or to participate in enough innovation initiatives, they will have this awareness, they will have a comfort zone and insights you know, to, to draw upon. And, and, and I like to compare this, you know, with um, in the aviation with the pilot crash tests, mm -hmm. you know, maybe you're not doing that right now, but you know, you, you need to develop that comfort zone on that competence that, you know, if you have the opportunity, then you will not uh, create resistance, but you will be engaged. And I think the most amazing part of what we're doing is our NPS because at the end of the day, it's all about engagement and getting people excited about this. And uh, we measured that through our NPS, uh, that now is 91%, 91. Wow. So I don't know a lot of other, you know, engagement initiatives in this innovation sectors that have that level of engagement and any pass. So that was my pitch. I'll, I'll stop here. <laughs> amazing pitch, amazing pitch. And the NPS, that high is actually amazing. It's really amazing that you have achieved that. So um, what I will do uh, for the people listening, if you're interested in learning more, we have a special link. Uh, it's gonna be below or up or on the right or on the left, uh, somewhere on the screen. I don't know yet, but click on that link and you'll get access to Startup Monday and you will see some uh, uh, open events they are creating uh, over the year. This is a really interesting tool. Uh, I've watched it, I've looked at it, and um, I'm certainly going to apply that in my engagements uh, as they pop up. But for you guys, if you really are looking to engage your team, think about innovation, get a bit of a different mindset, have a bit of fun during the day. And who doesn't want to be an entrepreneur for a day and run the business? <laughs> who doesn't want to be a CEO for a day is the question. <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. Uh, so you can tell your boss uh, uh, off or uh, or on, actually. But I think this is a real great opportunity for you guys to to learn more about the startup experience. What is what is it? What does it mean? And how can we as organization apply a different mentality, different thinking to what we do? To close off it, Fabian, this was amazing. 
really amazing. I'm really blessed to have you in our network. I'm really thankful that you uh, spent the time with us on, on, on this call. Uh, for the people uh, who don't know, she's in, uh, in beautiful Brazil. I am in beautiful Barcelona. So we are really far away, but by co-creating and by building that, that strong relationship, we are able to get, give you guys the information you need when you need it. So thank you again. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me and talk a little bit about uh, co-creation. Mm -hmm. And I wish all the innovators out there you know, a lot of success on your co-creation initiatives. On that bombshell, have a good day, guys.